I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I thank him for this day and for this opportunity to preach his word that he placed in my heart. I thank Pastor Murray. I mentioned to him during the week, I said, you're never here when I preach. And, um, and of course he said, because I trust you. And I'm humbled by that, really, uh, to be at this sacred desk in his absence. I thank all of you for being here. You know, some of our folks, when they see pastors not preaching, they decide to go someplace else. But y'all um, uh, are still here, so I thank you. And uh, some of you are here. You normally come at 8. Uh, one friend told me he cleared his busy calendar for today, so I appreciate you. And um, just, it's, it's an honor and a privilege. There is a word from on high, from the book of Hebrews chapter four, verses 14 and 16. And I wanna read from the New King James Version, but also uh, Hebrews. I mean, also from um, the Message Bible. So Hebrews 4, uh, 14 through 16. And it says, seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Now the message Bible says, now that we know that we have Jesus, this great high priest with ready access to God, let's not let it slip through our fingers. We don't have a priest who is out of touch with our reality. He's been through weakness and testing, experienced it all, all but the sin. So let's walk right up to him and get what he is so ready to give. Take the mercy, accept the help. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, I come now before your throne of grace, seeking your continued grace, your mercy, your power. Lord, bless your word that it may go forth and not return into you void. I pray, God, if anyone is here that has never proclaimed Jesus as their Lord and Savior, that the word would touch their heart, and through the power of the Holy Spirit, they will come unto you. Oh God, thank you for calling me to this moment. And God, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. In the name of Jesus, I pray, amen. Amen. For some of you, I may have shared uh, this experience before, but I know there are some here who um, have never heard it, but I worked in corrections in New York City uh, for a number of years, and it's one of the largest penal colonies in the world. And at the time when I first started, I was what they call a, a, in a staff position, and corrections, law enforcement is designed like uh, quasi-military. So I was at the beginning, the, the lower rank, and there was a position for a management position that was advertised and within the agency, and I applied, and it obviously would have been a promotion. The person who was doing the hiring um, didn't even give me the time of day, although I was qualified for the position. I was told by some other people that she had handpicked someone else for the job. Now that may not have been a problem if the commissioner at the time, uh, his priority was to stop the old boy network. His priority was to 
change the discriminatory hiring practices and promotion practices at the time. And it would not have been a problem if the commissioner wasn't one of my mentors and one of the persons who largely supported my career. So I had to figure out a way to get to him. And even though he was my mentor, I wasn't personally connected to him, so I didn't have his private, his number to his private line. But because of my counseling background, I have a good insight to human behavior, and I can understand organizational dynamics. So I knew who really had the power. So I was able to um, get in to see him. And some of you who, who know me well um, won't believe that um, I'm not as bold now as I was then or as assertive, but I was able to uh, make my way in to see him. Now, in case you want to know, um, which really is not the point I want to make, I did get the job, but, but that's not what I really want to impress upon you. Uh, what I want to say is that too often, too often opportunities, uh, we don't have opportunities even though we are qualified, or in a lot of cases more than qualified. Too often there are barriers in place to keep us from reaching our potential. Too often there are glass ceilings. We can't see them, but they're unbreakable barriers that keep us, keep minorities from rising to the upper rungs of the corporate ladder. There are separations based on race and religion and gender and sexual preference. Too often the barriers block us from our potential and professional growth. Not everyone is granted an interview with the CEO. Most persons of high stature have people around them and uh, that prevent you from uh, getting close to them. Now we know that um, uh, some people tried to get in to see the president, right? But they didn't come out the same way as they went in. So this just didn't take place, doesn't just take place now, but also in biblical times. The average man, woman, wasn't able to go before God's presence. As the highest religious authority, the high priest represented the Jews before God. Scripture says every high priest is a man ordained, is a man um, chosen to represent other people in their dealings with God. He presents their gifts to God and offers sacrifices for their sins. Only the high priests were ordained by God to enter the tabernacle and to approach him. We know the story of Esther in the book of Esther, chapter five. It details the courage that Esther had to have to even approach her husband, the king. She had to dress in her royal best. She couldn't come before him with her flannel pajamas and her rollers in her head and the head wrap around her, you know, silk wrap, right? She had to have it all together. So she was dressed, looking beautiful. She stood in the inner court in front of the king's hall. And only until he approved of her presence was she allowed to enter in when he pointed the golden scepter to her. Can you imagine that you have to do all that just to see your husband? But I thank God for our Lord Jesus Christ because he made it possible for us to approach the throne of grace because he is the high priest. Because of Jesus, the barriers are broken that prevent humanity from being in the presence of God. The good news is that Jesus Christ paid the price to allow you and me to come to his throne of grace. Let me remind some of you or maybe explain to others about Christianity 101, the basics of our Christian doctrine. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. So those of us who believed in him 
will not perish, but will inherit eternal life. He allowed his son to die on the cross for our sins. He sacrificed his life to ensure our victory. He sympathizes with our pain and our suffering and our weaknesses because he knows firsthand. While suffering and dying on the cross, he cried, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He cried, I thirst. He endured flocking, floggings and mocking and spitting, and he cried, at the end, it is finished. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Jesus suffered a sinner's death, yet he never sinned. He died on the cross, and he was buried. But early Sunday morning, just after sunrise, some ladies came to the cave. They came and saw that the stone, the door, was rolled away. And the angel said, you're looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. But he has risen. He is not here because he rose with all power in his hands. And he rose to break the chains and to remove all the barriers. And his resurrection from the dead made it possible for me and for you to approach his throne of grace. You can approach his throne with confidence. You can be certain that he will receive, you will receive mercy and grace. You will receive the help that you need when you need it. Is that good news? You can walk right up to Jesus. You can walk right up to Jesus. You can walk right up to Jesus and receive all that you need. The veil of separation has been torn away. So yes, you can freely approach God. Now, intercessory prayer is great. It's great to have people praying for us, but we have to know how to pray for ourselves. We have to know how to come to Jesus. So how should we come to the throne? We're not just coming to anybody's throne. We're coming to God's throne. The first thing is to come. We have to come. I wrestled with the words come and, and go for a little bit. I said, why does the word say come and not go? And it says, come describes the movement to the place of one of the speakers. So if God is here and I'm here, he's saying come. Go is movement to another place other than where the speakers are. So God is not saying, go over here. He's not saying, go around here. He's saying, come to my throne. Come to me, come straight to me. I'm here waiting for you, waiting to give you mercy, waiting to give you grace, waiting to give you what you need but you have to come. You must, why is it difficult for us to do that? Because it means that we have to let go and let God. It means that we have to surrender our control to Jesus. We have to set aside our selfish pride and humble ourselves before God. We have to accept the fact that we're not in control, God is in control. We have to let God fight our battles because he can fight them so much better than you and I. And the good news is he will always win. We shouldn't waste time stressing and trying to solve our problems and issues. We should go directly to God. The word tells us to trust him and lean not on our own understanding, but acknowledge him and, and he will direct our paths. There's no problem too big or too small for God. I've learned when I can't find my keys. Okay, God, where are my keys? 
It saves me stress, time, and energy. Because God is omniscient. He knows everything about you, everything about me, and everything that we need. Why doesn't he just give it to us then? Because he wants a relationship with us. It's like your children. Some things you give them without their asking. You do it because you want to, because you're supposed to, but there are other things that they come to, they need to ask for. You don't just give them everything. They have to ask sometimes for what they want and what they need. And sometimes you say yes, sometimes you say no, sometimes you'll say I'll think about it. And so God is omnipresent and we can approach him anywhere at any time. In our war rooms, in our cars, in our bathrooms, in our homes, in our schools, on the playground, he's everywhere and we can talk to him at any time and anywhere. The second thing is when you come to God's throne, you have to come boldly. You have to walk right up to his face as humble as you know how and ask for the help you need. I remember when I was in my early teens and um, uh, I had a fight, probably the only real fight that I ever had and sadly it was over a boy. And this, um, I was going with the, with the boy and this girl liked him and she um, just continued to taunt me and harass me over this boy. Well, one day she was so bold that she and her friends came up to my apartment door and rang the, the bell. And so I had had it by that time. You know, you're so bold that you're gonna come up. So in other words, she pressed my button and you'll know what happened after that. But anyway, the point is, <laughs> the boldness, her boldness is not what I want y'all to do, okay? <laughs> that's, that's, that's the old us. <laughs> but we want to be bold and have the confidence that God is with us and that he hears our prayers. If we draw near to God, he will draw near to us. Come to the throne with the confidence that you are a child of the king. Come with the confidence that you are a child of the most high God. You don't have to dress in your Sunday best or wait for the king to beckon you with a royal scepter. Approach his throne with your head held high. You have the blessed assurance that you can tell the Lord anything. There is no need to fear as you approach God's throne. He loves you unconditionally and he is a forgiving God. Lastly, the scripture promises that you will receive mercy and the help that you need when you need it. We all need help. We have weaknesses, we have limitations, we have some type of drama or confusion in our life. We need help with our finances, with our children, with our husbands, with our health, health and our careers. We just need help. And you can deny that you need help and try to do everything all by yourself, or you can accept God's invitation to come before his throne of grace and ask him for what you need. You have the choice to drown in your tears and wallow when you're sorry and despair, or you can find the peace and joy in Christ. In other words, at God's throne of grace, you will receive unmerited favor. You know you don't deserve it. I know I don't deserve it. We can't earn it, but God loves us so much. He loves you so much that he gave his only son who paid the price for you to have it. So you could come freely to his throne of grace. He made it possible for you to approach the mercy seat and to receive all that you need. You have grace in spite of your sins. You have the mercy of a second chance. You have the grace of forgiveness. You have the mercy of a new day every morning. 
because God is filled with compassion and wants to give it freely to all who come into his presence. The all-powerful God wants you to walk right up to him and receive what he's ready to give you. When I look back over my life, it's hard to believe that my sins are forgiven. It's hard to believe that God loves me in spite of my mistakes. Because of the sacrifice of Jesus, I'm saved from eternal damnation. The song just said, God thought I was worth saving and to die for so I can be free. I can come boldly before the throne of grace. I can come with confidence that I will receive mercy and find the grace that I need when I need it. I can walk right up to the presence of God. I would be lying if I said I never fret or get intimidated. Not often, though, no, but sometimes I do. There are times when I worry, but when I become anxious and troubled, I confess the promises of God. I repeat Philippians 4, 6, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. In other words, I pray the word of God with the expectation that his promises are true. I approach his throne with boldness because I know the Lord is on my side. I know he will see me through because he's done it so many times before. And if he did it for me, he can do it for you. If he did it before, he'll do it again. I know I'm not worthy to approach his throne, but I'm grateful for his grace and for his mercy. Oh, his amazing grace, his amazing grace that saved a wretch like me who was once lost but now is found. He wants to do the same for you. He wants you to be an heir to his kingdom. He wants you to be connected to him. He wants you to come to him. He wants you to pray without ceasing. It's a powerful weapon, prayer. Draw near to God, he promises to draw near to you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Come to the throne of grace boldly with confidence that you will receive mercy and find the grace and help that you need. Walk right up to him and ask him what you need and he will give it to you. He knows what you stand in need of. Our God is an awesome God. The message is to encourage you to not let the grace and mercy that is yours slip through your fingers. Sometimes we may take prayer for granted, but it's the most powerful weapon that we have. We may be bold in the flesh, but we need to be bold before the presence of God. We need to be bold and to receive what he has in store for us. If you're struggling on your own, you're wasting time. Life without Christ is nothing. So I encourage you on today, whether you know Christ or you don't, come to him. Remember the difference between come and go. We have a straight path because of Jesus Christ, who died for us, to be able to come to God. The high priest made it possible. No more need to go to the confession booth. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned, and, and the priest opens the, the screen so you can say your confession in the Catholic tradition. No, we come to our God ourselves directly. What a privilege and an honor. We don't deserve it to be in God's presence. So I implore you, I beg you, let us all take this to heart, that God has given us the privilege to come to him for anything. For anything. Is that good news? Is that good news? In this study that we've been doing for the last four or five weeks, 
It's about prayer. It's about coming to God's throne of grace. What a gift. What a gift that we have that we so often take for granted. So I, I thank you for this opportunity and prayerfully this has blessed your heart. Prayerfully it's encouraged you to reach out to God. Amen.